Hey, we're back at our regular job today. Uh, still no windows, but uh, there it, must be something to do. There is, and it, it kind of feels weird to be here because we haven't been here much, actually. No. It's weird. Well, we're building the stairs today for the front porch, and we're putting in some railing parts, the two by sixes for the cable rail. That may not seem very interesting, but trust me, it's always interesting when we're building something. I don't know why. There's more to it than you think. Yeah, That's there why. is. Since we've been here, there has been some things happening, like insulation is installed and inspected, R15, and that does have the zip R on the other side of that, so it makes it an R18. There you go. Oh, that's pretty nice. Yeah, How that is that? good. Yeah, and what else we got? We got some drywall going in finally. We didn't get our whole delivery. Right. <laughs> I don't know what is going on, but they're going to bring the rest of the material here. So they stopped. Their only complaint was when we offered to help them <laughs> do it. And they're like, no, no thanks. Because uh, we uh, His exact words were, please don't let Eric help at all. <laughs> I think that's that what, what he said. He really said Yeah, that? yeah. Well, because you, you put the screws in too deep or too shallow on the I thing. I think you watched a playback. I think it was Ray running. Oh, was it Ray? Yeah. I, well, I whoever it, it was, that person is not allowed to touch anything. Okay. This is kind of interesting. I believe that they installed 24-inch wide bats on our 19.2 centers. So those guys are going to have to really push up to get that drywall. But I think it's going to make it perform better. So the insulation's gonna kind of flip up over the ceiling joist a little more. I bet it will. It'll connect over top of the ceiling joist, which sometimes yeah. it might not. Right. Hmm. So I think that's gonna be a better deal, even though that was probably not fun to that's do. It's probably not what they wanted to do. We're gonna do these front steps now, and I'm doing the math this time, instead of Jamie usually does it. So what I did, and Jamie's gonna let me know if I did it right. Oh, come on. Is I leveled out from our deck surface so that we actually took the measurement where the stairs are gonna hit the ground. That's where it here. matters. Okay. You doing good? <clears throat> that measured about 31. So my real number that I think I wanna hit is about 29 and a half because they're gonna come with some finished gravel in here, like that deep. If we don't account for that, the first step's gonna be less. Hey, that makes me wanna tell a story. All right. Maybe later, huh? <laughs> yeah, maybe later. <laughs> All right. The story, I'm sure, is that if you don't account for that, your, ha your first step gets halfway buried with the finished grading, and then your first step is under the ground or less or goofy. So next, I divided that 29 and a half by a random number, and I did four risers would be my number that I did. That came out to seven and three-eighths of an inch per riser for four risers, and that is within a code passing allowance there, like seven to eight inches. So that's what we're gonna roll with. Sounds great. Couldn't have done it better myself. Oh, thanks. Something interesting about how we're doing this. This is the bottom step, seven and three eighths. Now, normally you would need to take one inch off because your finished tread on the bottom step is adding one inch, right? On on a subfloor, say, inside. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you have to drop it. You have to drop an inch off of this because of your inch here, only on the first step. But in this case, we're gonna form our concrete just up to the bottom of our first step, so it doesn't matter. We have adjustability, but let's talk about the top, T-O-P. All right, our deck band, let's see, I'll just draw it right here for you. It's right here, Yep. okay? There, it actually is right there, and it goes down, what do we say, about two inches. So the yep. deck itself is right here, right? Yep. Now, this part of the deck is acting as the first riser. Yep. But it already has a finished riser here. That is, the band is the finished riser. On this, we have to add a finished riser. It's yep. going to be a two-by thickness material. So if we just simply added the uh, inch and a half, we're going to end up with a step that's 11 and a half right. plus the overhang, 12 yeah. and a half, which Correct. equals So we gotta cut an inch and a half off of this. That's right, and that is a very common mistake, whether whether you miss that on the top where you have to shorten it in, yeah. you have to shorten the run, or on the bottom where you would shorten the rise. rise. Yes, top and bottom steps are a little different. Than... That's, that's a probably- the... And here there's only one regular step, because there's three, so. How about that? Right. Chop that off. All right, so, so that's going away. Yep. And that, that piece is getting replaced and added to the front of this one, and which makes it lose it here. Then one. we're added to the front of that one. Then we lost it here. Then we add it to the last one, and then we're done. And everything is the I same. I hope everybody followed that, because it seemed a little confusing. I can say it again <laughs> no, slower. <laughs> you know what I would do if I was doing steps? What? Call Matt Reisinger. Oh, yeah. 
Probably the easiest way, but it's easy. You just take the run minus the rake, and then you add a couple for the bottom hitter, and then the stairs, <laughs> the stairs are perfect. I mean, how hard can it be? You made me think of a question here. I have seen sometimes when people build the first step actually flush with the deck. Yeah, have you yeah, seen that? I have seen that. Now, I'm not sure why you would do that. Can you think of a reason? I mean, there might be a good reason why, why you would It makes the railing work out weird because the railing has to go up and then flatten out. You'd almost have to put another post right here or something weird right. for the railing to stay at the same height uh, parallel to the top of the step angle. Well, that. it might be somebody just looking at this and thinking there's nothing to hang the stringer to down here. Well, there is very little, yeah. obviously. The line is right there. We yeah. have almost two inches. Yeah, so we have to add something down here like that will allow yeah. us to attach the stringer. So if you didn't think, okay, I can add something here, you would think, oh, my stringer needs to butt here. And that would be a great place. I mean, there's yeah. lots of room, you know. Yeah, but I think that looks a little goofy. I like coming off with the first step being down from here, not out that here, then nice. down. Well, and it makes the steps stick out farther. It does, yeah, and in a lot of cases. Parking restrictions, parking. So we have limited space Yeah, here. That's, a, that's a good point. I don't think we've ever talked about that in a I video. I don't think so either. I think that'd be the main reason someone did it though. Last time you guys were back here, there was some big holes and big piles of dirt. Now it's all smoothed up and all that remains is this siren. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> and it does have a siren. This is the power supply for the pump that's going to pump the liquids down the lines that were dug way down the road. So if this tank were to fill up with liquids beyond a certain point and the pump didn't kick in, this thing's literally going to make a sound and have a red siren flashing to let you know <laughs> that the is full. That's it. We've checked our pattern, so I'm gonna trace it and make uh, four more for five total, I believe. That was good. Yeah. I think we're taking a step in the right direction. Whoa! We added a finished riser and a hidden kind of riser looking piece to this stairway set to make it a whole unit. Yeah. It and makes it easier. helped to attach it to our deck band too. Yeah, it helps with the alignment. It helps with the attaching it to the deck. So we may not even need a hanger board in there behind of it because we've got, can you say that behind of it? Is that, is that, I, gotta, I think it's fine. I think you know what I mean. You see where we are. I don't think it, I don't think anybody out here has got a problem with behind of it. <laughs> it's going to be strong. There, you can hear the drills over there. They're bolting it in basically right now. It's not going anywhere. Um, what about so, the concrete footing on it? Well, the concrete footing, it's definitely oversized, all right, and overdone, but it's going to fully support that step, no problem. We decided to sort of hang or suspend the set over our dugout footing. Yeah, so instead of pouring a footing up and then trying to make your steps fit, we put the steps where we want them for the footing up to the bottom of the stringers. I'm not going to say we've done every variation of possible ways you could do this, but we have simply formed a footing, you know? Yeah, and, and now then, we've done behind of it. And then pour... <laughs> <laughs> and then we we pour that and then try to place the steps on it. But then you end up with some footing hanging off of each side and sometimes it's not even or it's not perfectly flush with the front yeah. or something about it. Because everything you're trying to be precise, it's difficult to suspend a little formwork deal. It's hard to like, because yeah. you're, what you're going to do is you're going to beat stakes into the ground to try to hold some formwork together. And it's like rock. And yeah. so when you start beating it, Stuff starts going We're sideways. A st couple steps by doing it in reverse order. I think it's easier. I think it's better. And then we're just going to add concrete until just the level. Oh, you can see me coming up with yeah. it. Yeah. Just till it comes up and touches the bottom. Right and from the behind of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's going to be funny for a while. Uh, until it just <laughs> touches and supports all the stringers and the front edge of that riser piece there. And I think we'll call it quits right there. It'll it's be beautiful. Great. We'll go home. Yeah. This episode is brought to you by Pearlsmith, specializing in flat screen TV wall mounts and carts. And I've been in desperate need for a new wall mount for my downstairs TV for a while now. This thing was terrible. 
The Pearlsmith full motion TV mount that I got fits most 32 to 35 inch TVs and monitors and holds up to 88 pounds. It's also able to hold the TV tightly and sturdy, which is what I'm looking for, and it's safe for the TV and the user. It has a wider wall plate suitable for different scenarios, and it saves space, making my living room look more organized so I can really enjoy my entertainment experience. This Pearlsmith TV mount is built to last and it's UL certified, and it's confirmed through official lab testing that the stand can do up to 6,000 folds. And if you're looking for an easy way for your entertainment to be mobile, Pearl Smith also makes this rolling TV stand. It features lockable caster wheels with real bearings and a really heavy duty base. I really appreciated how this stand seemed overbuilt for the weight of my TV, and it also had easy to read, clear instructions. Some extra features on the cart are this tray for your DVR, console, or remotes, as well as a mount for a front facing camera if you need that for gaming. Check the video description for links to these products and you can get $40 off the Pearl Smith TV cart with my promo code in the description at checkout and that's a 15 day limited offer. Also, Pearl Smith is launching the first giveaway on their website. Sign up for a chance to win prizes worth $445. Good luck. The giveaway ends on the 5th of July. Enter now. I've always hated trying to get the bag of concrete shoved into the mixer. Yeah. You know? Oh, that's why. Well, it's never <laughs> I watch a lot of videos, you know, on YouTube about construction and all of the kind of things. Wow, this is really... <laughs> this, <laughs> I mean, this is great here. Actually, they're doing right now what I was about to say. I've seen a lot of videos in other countries where they actually just mix concrete on the ground, like on, on a concrete slab or something. Yeah. They just dump the mix in the water and they just shovel it. Like, like uh, what's that place where you go where they, they make... Um... Marble slab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How'd cream. you know? Yeah, it's like where they just mix everything on the table there. They just do that with the concrete and then they shovel it out of there. So this is new. Now we're just dumping the concrete on the ground and shoveling it in. Is this better? It's no. better. It's kind of a hybrid blend of, uh, you know, yeah. techniques here. Ray, that was beautiful yeah. jigging action there. That was that was the shot. That's the best jigging you've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, that's the shot. You wide angle, Ray? Yeah. We love wide angle, so you can get really close and still see. Like I'm two inches from. <laughs> no, you're touching face. his face. That's his nose. It really. See all the pores? It still looks like you're touching his face. <laughs> so, let's get into how we're doing this. Uh, the real pro tip here is check plumb on these posts. Let go of that post, Jay. If we would have measured to that where it's just <laughs> sitting. That would have been an inch longer measurement. So we, we held it plumb and then measured it and go ahead and give me some pressure back. And, and then the rail top cap is gonna hold it in position. Um, and we're using a different kind of fastener um, that doesn't leave a large mushroomed nasty spot. That's a GRK. I got, a, I got a little info if you okay. want. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. And another thing, too, is that these posts are not always going to be square. Never. So if you just measure one side, that might be the short side, and then your board's going to be short. Yeah, yeah. So, so we take measurements on both sides, take the long measurement, and then we scribe if we need to. Yeah, we'll show them that on the that. next one. We'll show them exactly how to do it. Perfect. All right, so let's do a little toe screw here. Um, starting in about an inch and quarter back and turning it. So here's something interesting about most tapes that most people don't know is almost all of them have an increment that the body of the tape measure is that's on it somewhere. Like right here under the clip says three and an eighth inches. That's the measurement from here to here on the body of the tape. So if you have to measure between two surfaces like this, you can bump it tight. That measures 87 and an eighth. If you add three and an eighth to that, it should be 90 and a quarter. 
So let's verify if I bend this down to tight. 90 and a quarter. And that's kind of hard to bend your tape into a 90 degree corner like that. So that's that's a pretty good feature, actually. Is, we should know. use that more. If you really want to get serious about your tight to tight measurements without bending a tape into the corner, you use this folding rule right here. This is what the old timers used. And look at this, it's got this slide out feature. Boom, Wow. butt tight. Now you can measure that's five and seven eighths plus, plus whatever. whatever that is. That is pretty 37. fancy actually. I'm 37 plus pretty uh, impressed. that. Uh, it's good for measuring like inside of a cabinet. Yeah. You know, where you have a trouble reaching in there and stuff. Slide that out, boom, there's your number. See? That's cool. It's right there. This is why we cut it long. You can see there's like three sixteenths of a gap on this side and it's tight on this far side. How do you look? You're pretty squared up. I mean, that's pretty fantastic. I mean, my side's always good. So <laughs> I'm just gonna take my pencil and uh, scribe maybe that way. That's probably not enough. I'm gonna go this way. Ooh, that might be too much. Let me see what the number is, because I know what my number is supposed to be. Let's do that. 88 and an eighth. I'm gonna take, I'm just not gonna take the line out and that'll be right. Yeah, so check out the fit now. Um, we might have a 30 second open, but that's okay. So we're gonna stain this all dark and that'll disappear. And that's basically what we're doing on every section to just get them fitted to these crooked posts. If you didn't know, these are pressure treated and when you get them, they're wet. And when they dry, they check like this. They're just all gonna do that. And they also twist and warp and bow uh, till they finally dry out. Um, there's just not much you can do about it. And we could do some kind of finished material around all this and square them up. That costs a lot of extra money, like a lot, a lot of extra money compared to just using this as the final post. So that's what we're doing. These clients are not looking to spend all of the retirement you know, on this house. They're looking to not work and enjoy living out here. We decided to run these top caps into the side of the post, uh, even though our original plan was <laughs> something different. What were we gonna do? We were gonna put these on top of the posts like that and lap over top. There would be a couple of miter joints like this. And we decided to change our minds because these kind of joints, even though you can make them look really nice the day that you build it, most likely it's gonna look bad in the future. Right. Let me explain why. The pressure treated wood is wet. It has a high moisture content. We don't even know how high. Framing we, we material. Could check it. Well, I don't have my thingy today. We should check it. It'd okay. be interesting. Um, framing material for interior framing has to be 19% moisture content or less. Yes. They actually kiln dry it down to 19 and then stop. Uh, whereas, like, say, furniture grade wood, it would be like 8%. Or mm -hmm. like flooring, finished flooring, finished materials. Like you're talking five. like below 10% moisture content. So that's double. All right. What happens when a board dries? Usually it shrinks in width, mm -hmm. not necessarily length, and the width shrinking is what causes our problem. So right now this board measures a little over, say four and, I'm sorry, five and five eighths, and five eventually and it's gonna shrink down maybe an eighth of an inch. And what happens is this point here will now be right here. Mm -hmm. All right, and what, what that does is now your point goes from there to there. Yep. So it'll open on the heel of the cut if this, severely. Yeah, if this board changes an angle by an eighth in the heel, and, that and one the does too. one that it's with, then you're gonna end up with a joint. Let me set it down here. You're gonna end up in about six months with a joint that looks like this. Every time. I don't know how to avoid it. I don't know if there's a way to avoid it. I don't think there is. Don't use pressure Not with wood. pressure treated. Don't use wood at all. Yeah, you would use something like, uh, I don't know, engineered, uh, Composite, no. like a Trex type yeah. material. Trex or uh, PVC or I don't know. Metal. Uh. <laughs>
We're gonna pause for a little segment about tools, which is what we use to do our job. And today we're gonna to be talking about tape measures. I generally use the Fatmax 25 or a Fatmax 30, but this guy showed up with something different and he says it's better. It is a Lufkin Shock Force G2 25 feet. And let's talk about the features, why like you think it's better. One, it, it doesn't feel as cheap. Okay, so you're saying Fat Max is starting to feel cheap. It's like, starting to feel cheap. Okay, and I agree that the tape feels thicker. I think it's it's definitely more curved like yeah. this, okay. the profile of it. So that helps it to have the 17 foot standout. Yeah, so I don't know if it's thicker or if it just gets its strength more from that shape. Mm. Number two is this has a diamond coated hook. And I don't know if you can see on camera, but it's got this grippy texture that allows it to hook and hold on things better, which let's Grip, look at Fat Max. Grippy tippy. No. I, mean, I like that. I do like that. I like the way it feels. I like that it has this belt clip thing. Okay. So you push on that and the belt clip goes on. And Jono doubled that as a pencil holder, which it did work. All right. That one feels like you're pulling it out like you're fighting it just a little bit. Right. But it, it comes back really fast. Should we do a test? I mean, we could do a little race. Yep. yep. One, two. Three. Oh, you didn't let go. I did let go. It didn't do anything. <laughs> I let go. It didn't do a thing. No, it's doing it. It's doing okay. It now. No. Okay. So there you go. It's doing it now. It literally didn't have enough pull to even start. What we don't know, Ray, is whether this is a benefit or not. Hey, it's not personal. Okay. I, I liked it at real life. <laughs> that thing's rated at 120 feet of drop. Is Ooh, that a drop? Is that a, a, are you working on skyscrapers and you drop your tape? <laughs> or if you're measuring stuff in a plane or... Uh, okay. <laughs> it, it also talks about the blade life. Okay. All right, so it says it's, what, three times longer blade life? It's hard to even say it, but I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's a more durable coating, like a paint. Could be. Could be a better paint. Yeah, these do tend to, if you get them wet once, it starts to come off the edges and then rust, so... This is a lot to say about a tape measure, but we use tape measures all day, every single day. There's a tape measure in my hand 50% of the day, so I mean, it matters. Uh, we got to get back to work. This is the last thing, though. This has the numbers on the back and the front, and they're like twice as large for people like Jason. Come on, bro. Um, so still... you can see the numbers. Aren't those boards gonna get in the way of the trash trailer? Yes, and the walk board. It does? You don't wanna take that trash trailer. You know you don't. Nah, let's leave it. Let's leave it. No trash trailer today. Hey, thanks for checking out our video today and thanks for building with us. Make sure to check back because we're gonna try to finish up this entire house in about the next month. We're really gonna hustle and we're gonna have videos about doing the whole thing. If you've enjoyed the video, please remember to get subscribed, give us a thumbs up, that does help. And we'll see you on the next one.